Hey guys, I'm Joe. And I'm Rob. And we're from Echo Spirits, and we're here today to talk about uh, Queen Share uh, Rum Batch 1. So this was our first batch of Queen Share, obviously, Batch 1, uh, from last year. came out last November, mid-November. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Queen Share, um, unless you have, the, the idea is, unless you have one of the giant three-story tall column stills, all stills are somewhat inefficient, okay? And by inefficient, we mean um, they're different parts of distillation, right? Different ingredients that come off at different temperatures, um, some of which you get rid of. And if you have a very efficient still, a column still, it's very easy to separate those very cleanly, very purely. You're getting 99% what you want out of the main parts section, the good section. Um, if you have an inefficient still, a pot still or a hybrid still, that means there's a little bit of blending in that happens, right? There's some heads that blends into the hearts. There's some tails that blends into the hearts and vice versa, meaning that there is good ethanol that we like to drink, you know, the good parts of it that get blended into the heart or the heads and the tails rather. Um, when you're distilling those heads and tails, while they're mostly waste product, there's also good components to them. So the heads contains a lot of the flavor compounds that are associated with uh, brandies, you know, fruit, any fruit based distillate or whiskeys, any, or any grain based distillate. Um, and the tails contain a lot of the flavor compounds that are associated with rum, mm. molasses or sugar based distillates. Um, so because we have an inefficient still, that means some ethanol gets blended down into those tails, right? That's the most flavorful, most rich portions, you know, pure, pure flavor compound wise esters, um, you know, good, interesting compounds that interact with the barrel wood, um, in rum. So what we do is we save up those tails rather than trying to recycle it into the next batch or throwing it down the drain. We save those up, set them aside, um, wait till we've got enough to fill the still on its own and redistill it all at once. And that usually yields, you know, enough to fill one barrel. Um, so that winds up being somewhere between eight and 10 regular rum distillations, you know, so it definitely crosses a couple different batch numbers mm -hmm. uh, before we get one barrel of queen share. And that's the actual process. That's it's the actual process. Not just a fun name that we came right. up with. Yeah. The queen share, you'll also see, you're starting to see queen share um, in other products. People are kind of picking up on that process. I've heard of queen share rise, for example, which oh. I think would be kind of fun to do sometime. Um, basically it's anytime you're taking the heads or the tails, redistilling it, um, because it's got those good flavor compounds and that good residual ethanol and putting it in a barrel. We don't see this with a lot of like name brand rums no. for multiple reasons. It, Time. Used to be, it used to be a very, very common practice. Um, you know, historically there was been many queen share, particularly rums, but other spirits as well. Um, it disappeared because more and more companies are moving to those column stills. And again, because those column stills are more efficient, they don't have those, those tails are purely bad compounds that we don't want to get into, into our drink and they don't have as much residual ethanol in them. So it's not worth the time to, to redistill those and try to get that out. It kind of gets it out in one pass. Mm. Um, so first batch of queen share, uh, roughly correlates to like batches one and two of our regular rum. Um, that's kind of when the, the tails from that would have been redistilled and put in here. And this was 18 months in a used watershed distillery bourbon barrel. Um, so it's kind of our first foray into it. On the nose, I'm getting almost like a honey toffee sweetness. Honey toffee, a little almond. Um, oh, of yeah. Fruit like a like a papaya or pear. Gun to my head. Somebody has me smell a papaya. I'm blindfolded. I couldn't tell you <laughs> that it smells like, it a smells like a papaya. <laughs> yeah, no, couldn't do it. Not on the palate, more the same. A lot of that toffee, you know, kind of smooth, you know, on the mouth feel wise, it's very smooth, very, you know, rich, oily mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, a lot of those flavor compounds, very intense. I mean, there's a lot going on there. It's not. Um, you know, even when you're drinking something that you consider to be like a complex whiskey that kind of comes and goes and has different layers and things going on, you know, still the predominant thing you're tasting is barrel. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you're kind of looking for all those notes. Queen share rum smacks you in the face with those flavor compounds. Yeah. And you it's know, a, it's a intense. steady ride all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very good. And almost on the back end, I get like, uh, 
a Werther's original kind of vibe. You know, you had said like that Absolutely. oiliness. Kind of it has a, that like tongue coating, almost like a like a Werther's in my mind. Like I kind of associate with like yeah, a, kind of a caramely honey coffee combination sort of thing. So mm-hmm. it's almost like this yeah, um, you know, like intense dark roast coffee sort of thing happening on the end there. Man, it's delicious. So that's batch one of our crunch here. Cheers. Cheers. All right, Queen's Chair, batch one. I remember trying this for the first time. It was an experience, like, it was really nice.